Hello, everybody. That was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio Headquarters in Hooks at New Hampshire. Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, Google, basically wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Pastor Padrone, and I'm here with my fellow co-hosts, Paul, Nick, and Dave. Hola. And this week, we are going to be discussing tasting notes. How do you describe what you are tasting and smelling when you are smoking your cigar or enjoying your pipe tobacco? And uh, as we have that discussion, we are going to be starting off by reviewing this cigar. This is the 724-113 Toro. And it is a uh, collaboration of Kurt Kendall of 724 Cigars and Joe Torres of 113 Cigars. And they teamed up uh, to release this as part of the fifth anniversary celebration of Club Humidor, which Joe Torres owns, which is a uh, uh, store in San Antonio, Texas. And let me tell you a little bit about this cigar. It is a Nicaraguan Jalapa wrapper and binder. Mm. And there's Jalapa in the filler, mm. along with some Condega and Esteli. So it's a Nicaraguan Puro, um, those three different regions from uh, Nicaragua in the filler. It's a Toro 6x52, and it is a beautiful, mm. beautiful oh, cigar. Oh, yes. Very oily. Um, Paul, what are we drinking with this? Oh. We are drinking, so I, I talked to Kendra this week about you know, what would be a good drink to have with the cigar. I gave her the tasting notes. Uh, she came back with Jack Daniels rye whiskey. Mm. And I actually have never had this particular rye whiskey before. I, you know, Jack Daniels, yes, I've had that numerous times. Who hasn't, right? Yeah, who hasn't? You know, all, all different versions of Jack Daniels, but this is one that I haven't had. So mm. I'm interested to see what you, uh, what you gentlemen think of this with the cigar. Well, I'll tell you right now, the cigar is super smooth. If you're going to smoke a 724 cigar, it's going to be smooth. Mm -hmm. oh. It's going to be creamy. Yep. Yep. There's going to be some depth to the uh, flavors on this. Mm. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. this does not disappoint in the least. Um, it makes you want flannels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which one of these things is not like, like the, the other? <laughs> Which one of these things doesn't belong? <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. he's got the dog walker shirt on so you know it's not a total loss there um there were 10 they in this uh limited series there are ten thousand cigars that were made and they were put out in 10 count boxes and the only two places you can get them are at club humidor locations in uh in and around san antonio texas and at both twin smoke shops lounges locations mm -hmm. in new hampshire that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, so yeah we'll but run with it. We're going, we'll, we'll go with it anyway, yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, you know, th I thought this would be a great cigar to talk about tasting notes. You know, we we, we joke, you know, uh, what's the most famous tasting uh, thing we have on the soundboard, Dave? Nuts? No. <laughs> Sweet nuts. No. Sweet nuts? Uh, very well. <laughs> Uh -huh, you yeah. came prepared, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Yeah. I concur. Uh, what are you thinking about? Tobacco Dave? notes? Tobacco yeah, notes? tobacco notes. Tobacco notes. I don't know why. Thank you. There you A go. lot of tobacco. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. A lot. You know, there, you ever have that, you know, where there's, you know, you're tasting the cigar or the pipe tobacco and you, you know you like it, but you don't really know how to describe it. Mm. So if you don't want to be like Nick and just say it's lots of tobacco <laughs> notes... We're going to uh, all talk about how you can go about learning to um, describe what it is that you are smoking. And tasting notes and things like that is really nothing more than learning the skill of taste. And what I mean by that is learning how to interpret what your nose and your mouth are telling you. And the more you do that, the more you pay attention to that, the better it's going to become. Mm. Oh. Corona. <clears throat> and um but like learning any skill and this is really a skill it's more caught than taught so hopefully if you're listening and you have one of these 724 113s mm -hmm. um 
and as we talk about what we're tasting and smelling, ask yourself if you um, aren't seeing the same things. If you're smoking something else, tell us in the comments what it is you're smoking and what you are smelling and tasting on a cigar. Um, and I think my advice to people who are starting to try and figure this out is start simple. Yeah. You know, um, is it rich or is it mild? How would you describe the cigar? Is it rich or is it mild? Rich. Definitely rich. On well, a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being mild and 10 being really rich? I'd probably put seven. this I'd probably <laughs> put this at like a 7.5. 7.5. Seven seven yeah. I've had some pretty rich cigars uh, in my time of smoking, <laughs> uh, in my adventures. Yes. Uh, numerous adventures. Mm -hmm. But this Mixed is... Adventures and banking. That's right. Um this is this is up there though. This has got some really nice power to it, really rich. But again, with the richness, I think, in curt fashion, mm -hmm. there is incredible smoothness to this. Right. Um, and that's kind of like uh, I, when when people come into the shop and I start to explain the seven twenty fours, it's extreme extremely smokable for anybody, a novice or an expert. What about you, Dave? I can almost taste the flannel. I hope, I hope I hope not. That's what the flannel <laughs> tastes like. That means you're burning your shirt. <laughs> Anyone who smokes a cigar, pipe tobacco, and smells flannel, something is wrong. <laughs> something <laughs> is wrong. You might have to put your shirt out. Now, Dave, what? <laughs> to, on, to me, honestly, to, to me, the the cigar is very smooth. It's very rich creamy. or mild? Oh, we're rich. We're, we're, we're still on that kick again. Yes, yes. I said I. We're trying to seven. help people learn how it's, to do this. We're starting <laughs> simple. <save. laughs> Seven. On a scale of one to ten, again. seven, seven again, seven. Okay, seven. real seven. Uh, Paul, where would you put it? I'm going to put it as an eight. Woo! Um, this, so, to me, I mean, I've smoked all the seven twenty four because I know mm -hmm. we all have. Yeah, this is by far the the most fullest body cigar that Kurt has put out in my eyes. For sure, I agree now, with that. Now, now, having said that. Um, this has got a lot of nice earthy leather mm -hmm. spice, a little bit of sweetness, incredibly well balanced, incredibly smooth. Mm -hmm. The smoothness, however, does not take away from the depth of flavor that I'm getting from that. True. So I think, as having said that, you know, I'm going to put this as an eight because I've had stronger cigars that have actually have had less flavor, mm -hmm. so less body for me. So I think this is a, a I'll call this a medium full uh, to almost full body flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, medium full ish for intensity, but incredibly smooth. Well, let me yeah. add a footnote then, because I feel you like you add that footnote. It's, a, it's gonna be, it's definitely a seven, but for me, when I get about halfway through, it goes up to about an eight. Yes, well, as, as, uh, as the cigar, as you get into the cigar, go past the first third, I absolutely agree with you. I have noticed that it gets a little bit more intense. True, mm -hmm. but boys, I think we, we might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Mm -hmm. Danny's trying to go step by step and trying yes. to <laughs> teach our viewers <laughs> yes. on right now, the, the beginning of tasting particular we cigars. We will get to okay. that. Yes. yes. Sorry, guys. I, so that, no, that's very that good. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, we will get I to appreciate that. that very much. Now, the second question I want to ask, and we'll start with Paul, and listen to the question. Okay. It's very simple. Yes. One being bland and ten being spicy. Ooh. So now, now you know, we've talked about rich or mild, yep. and now, you know, another another taste that, that your mouth picks up is spice, saltiness, pepper, yep. you know, versus bland. Like, just no spice or anything at all. On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you put this cigar? Is it bland Excellent. or spicy? Five. 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 Five, right in the middle. Right in the middle. And um, why is that? Because the... the sp <laughs> okay, so the... Sp the can, spice? I, can, I, can I elaborate a little bit? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can so elaborate. So there's a difference between a spice, a spicy flavor, and pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so spice is to me, is something that doesn't last very long on your palate. Okay. Pepper notes generally will last a little bit longer than right. that. Okay, it's a little bit more of a zinc to it. Uh, this, the spice does not last more than just a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. but it is, but it's definitely prevalent to mm -hmm. me. So, I, um, so I'm going to say, and every, and every time I take a draw from it, 
right from the beginning to the end, I'm getting that spice. And, and I definitely get a lot of nice, rich spice on the retrohale. Yeah. So the and the olfactory senses are, are picking that up uh, big time. Spice. So I'm going to give it a five. Okay. I'm going to give it a six. Because I get more in the retrohale. Mm-hmm. And it does, that tickle in the nose yep. hangs around a little bit more than the spice on the I would agree with on that, the too. Palette. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to give it a six. Nick, what about you? For the spice note on here, I'd probably, on my palate with the pairing or just the cigar on its own, for me it feels more of like a little sprinkle of pepper that you would put maybe on your chicken. You, would, <laughs> I'm trying to look. I'm trying to break this down for our viewers here, that or for for sweet nuts, sweet nuts. Um, I'm just trying to make it as simple as I possibly can without getting into any of the cigar jargon uh or formalities of the cigar talk because we can all be kind of guilty of that we all get into our you know our ramble and everything of yeah. the cigar and everything yeah. and we kind of get away from trying to keep kinda it like, simple kind of like you are now yes exactly so <laughs> i need to stop that um so <laughs> oh come on <laughs> you gotta hit it on that right now <laughs> anyways for me i would say as far as the pepper note in here I would say it'd probably be a three. There's a some three. Pe- there's some pepper in there. I get it a little bit on my palate. I get mm-hmm. it more in my retrohale, mm-hmm. where you activate more of your senses there. Okay. Mm, excuse me. That's wonderful. So, mm. Three. Three. Mm. Okay, Dave. Mm. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna agree with you, Dan. I don't think. Oh, I, well, I forget already. But it, I'm gonna say it's a five. That so, would be me. Dave. That would be. That <laughs> would be Paul. <laughs> he did six. He had fifty-fifty uh, shot, and he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did taste. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> better than Rayon, Dave. But, uh, <laughs> yes, so Tastes like Rayon. burning cotton. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> better than the banker. All right, so uh, you're going to go with the five. I'm yeah. Go with the five. That's what my olfactory is telling me. Okay. All right. And then the, la- the last thing, that, what, another thing that your uh, oh, tongue okay. and your nose discerns is sweet and sour. Mm. Sweet and sour. Would you say this cigar is more sweet? Or more sour, and we'll say that the sweeter is the one, and the sour is the ten. Okay, I'm gonna. Well, it definitely, I, I definitely pick up sweet. There's no question oh, yeah. about it. If you, pick- but I'm gonna say it's probably maybe, maybe a two and a half. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two and a half on that scale. It's yeah. not the sweetest cigar, but it's certainly, it's certainly prevalent, and it's, it's there, throughout. Yeah, I, I I was gonna say two. I'm gonna stick with the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely say two. There is a little bit of tanginess in there, but mm-hmm. um, the sweetness overcomes um, a lot more. Um, so I'm gonna say two and a half, just to kind of. I concur. There you go. I concur. Yeah, basically, Dave. Yep. What about you? Can you talk? Yep, I absolutely agree. That's one of my favorite things about the cigar is the subtle sweetness that's through there. Yep. And uh, yeah. Okay. No sour notes here. Okay. So we've started to to you know go through some things to help us think about how to describe the cigar you know is it rich or mild is it bland or spicy is it sweet or sour these are simple things that you can start with to start thinking about what it is that you are tasting and smelling another thing that you can do is you can ask yourself um, a couple of questions here's the first question you can ask yourself um what do these tastes and aromas make me think of? Now, Paul, mm. what do these tastes and aromas that you have going on in your mouth and in, on your beard right now <laughs> make you think of? What are some of the the, oh, the, mm. the things that come to mind? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, for me, it's cocoa. Really, I get cocoa off of the cigar that's funny because i don't cocoa and earth well, are earth, things yes. that i get and it's like a dark a dark cocoa on this mm-hmm. Man. i get some wood i get a little bit I, wood. I get i get the i get the earth i get yep. i get a little bit of leather mm-hmm. um I, I get a little bit of the uh Obviously, the sweetness, mm-hmm. uh, the spice. Um, I'm not getting any cocoa, unfortunately. That uh, my palate has never picked that up, and I've had these probably six or seven times since we brought it in. Okay. Um, so I'm not picking up cocoa. 
See now, this is this is one of the things that that's that's very good to talk about when we're talking about tasting notes. Mm-hmm. Everybody's palate is different, yeah. and so you know, don't be concerned about trying to pick up everything that everybody else is saying. You know, use your own discernment. Mm-hmm. You know what you may be what what may be cocoa to me may be more earth to you. You know, but that sweetness to me reminds me and makes me think of like a dark cocoa kind of sweetness see to me i'm i'm i don't want to term it like this but it's not cocoa as much but it's more to me a little bit more caramel type okay. of sweetness okay so um and i know caramel and co- chocolate go together but they it do. it it uh, it's no, it's to me the i'm not picking up any cocoa notes but if i had to describe a specific type of flavor i would say a little bit more caramel type sweetness okay mm-hmm. Nick, what about you? What what kind of flavors and taste aromas does this cigar make you think of? Leather and wood. Sweet nuts. Not sweet nuts. It's not a burly. Um, Just more leather. I get more leather on my palate and the front of my palate. Mm -hmm. Um, Brown leather or black leather? I'd have to say brown. Brown. I'd have to say brown (laughs) leather. Black leather has more of a tanginess to it. Kind of like almost like a Connecticut broadleaf. Mm. Oh, really? I was, was going to say red leather. Mm. No, definitely oh. brown leather. No. Um, yeah, leather and wood. That that keeps b- b- uh, bouncing back and forth in my mind right mm-hmm. now. And Dave? I'm going to have to agree with Paul with the caramel. Caramel um, toffee? Caramel toffee here. <laughs> and, uh, but I also feel like it's maybe like an undertone of cedar. Okay. Like a smoky <laughs> That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, smoky seed here and uh, caramel. Coffee. Caramel. 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 You don't have to take up space with the, you know, just trying to think of things to say. Just, you know, just whatever's on your mind. Just let it go. Let it go, Dave. Let it go. Okay. Let now, go. the next question you can ask yourself, and this helps me a lot, is what food or drink do you think would go well with what you're tasting Mm. what would you what would you want to be eating or drinking with the cigar or pipe tobacco that you're having on the top stop it (laughs) eat eating 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 or drinking believe it believe it or not t-bone steak no not with this cigar (laughs) Ah. because even though this has a nice to me more of a full of body depth of flavor it, it's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different subtle flavors that are coming out of this. Yeah, I don't want to have a specific food that's going to take away from this, so I'm going to go with something a little bit more bland, like chicken. Mm. Chicken, chicken, okay. chicken. Be- you would want to have chicken with this. Yes. I mean, why would chicken be- go well? Because with again, this? chicken like, to chicken, me, chicken, I, chicken, I've had chicken. success eating chicken before he has he Listen, has i, I, I have a theory i have a theory i have a theory okay and i have actually we have a customer that comes in every once in a while we got talking about food groups and what we eat before we have a cigar and i challenged him to say i've had success eating chicken and getting the best flavors out of the, the cigar right after that and he goes well i'm going to go home and i'm going to try that and he came in the next time and he says you were absolutely right i had just baked chicken and it brought out the flavors of that cigar that I was told about and I was looking for. And he's done that a couple of times. So I'm going to say with this cigar, I don't want to have a food like a steak or a burger that's going to probably uh, hide the flavors, take away from it. Mm-hmm. It's not that strong of a cigar. I want to I want to have a, like a nice baked chicken that's, that's got some flavor to it, but it's going to... Maybe a little make... maybe a little spritzer of lemon? Nope. Nope. No? Nothing. No. Just, Just baked, baked chicken, chicken, maybe a little salt and pepper, and then... Have the, I think this would go very, very well with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bland salt and pepper chicken. Bland Dave, salt. what yep. about you? Big chicken. What, what do you think of? What kind of food and drink do you think would go well with this? I would this? love to have, like, you know, just a black coffee mm-hmm. and um, yep. the uh, those little toffee snacks that you brought in. Oh, the caramel toffee. Caramel toffee. Caramel toffee. Caramel toffee. <laughs> Covered in nuts. How do we get on this stuff? Well, <laughs> you wanted the episode, and you got it, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick, what about you? I would do 
So for food, so I love me some good red meat. I would do a nice 32 ounce sirloin. Oh, good. Medium rare. Mm -hmm. Five minutes on each side. Mm. No pepper, no salt, no seasoning. A little gamey. I think the little gamey would bring out a little bit more flavor in the cigar. Drink. Glass of Lagavulin. Or maybe some wine. Some nice, bold red wine. Mm. I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking a nice, robust Merlot, maybe. <laughs> oh, God. So basically, come on, I'm kidding. Come no, on, man. My brain is working you, here. You, what can, you, you can tell he's not a wine drinker. Yeah. Yeah. What, what you're going to do is you're going to blow out your taste buds, get totally boozed up, and then smoke the cigar for a few minutes, and then sit on And then pass out? Yeah. The cigar is great. <laughs> It is great. <laughs> okay, so that didn't necessarily turn out so well, but you people out there, <laughs> you know, thinking about what you'd like to have with it can make you think about what kind of flavors that you are um, experiencing in the tobacco. It helps you think through what it is you're, well, what would you like to go with these flavors? That yeah. might help you come up with some ideas of how to describe yeah, it. Yeah, come on, chat. What do we yeah. got? What do we got? So, um, six for six at, uh, salt. Salted English toffees. Mm -hmm. That's English. That's uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little salt. A little Kamala toffee. Yeah. She's like Dave. She likes her coffee toffee. Salty. Toffee coffee. Salty coffee toffee. Put some toffee in the coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i never done that ever in my life, but okay, it well. sounds pretty good. All right. Now, right along with us, we're, we have a new segment, people. Yeah. Brand a new, new segment called the Tobacco University Word of the week and this is something that we're going to do to again help educating our audience about all things tobacco and um, i'm a certified tobacconist through tobacco university the rest of the guys here are going through that right now and um, dave is studying to take the test and one of the things that he's going to do every week is come up with a word from the tobacco university handbook that goes along with what it is that we are talking about that week. And Dave, what is the TU word of the week? The TU word of the week is bouquet. 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 Like a floral bouquet? The smell or the nose of a cigar um, or pipe tobacco. <laughs> So when you're smelling the cigar, when what's you that word? Box, P I P. -E oh, oh pipe. pipe. Yes, pipe tobacco. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. And so, yes. Is that, is that it? Um, is that is that all you were going to say? So when the, the you gonna, when, you, when you're smelling the cigar, when you take it out of the box and you're you're getting your notes from it, the cold, you know, your cold draw, you're you're opening a tin and you're you're smelling the notes and stuff like that. Um, that is the bouquet of what you are presented. Thank you for using that in a sentence. We appreciate it. Yes. So with that in mind, Paul, what would you say is the bouquet of this cigar? No, are we, are we, we're talking about the smell, the smell of the smoke. It's lit. So yeah. Okay. We're not, right. we're not okay. going right. to talk yeah. about yeah. the yeah. unlit. Try and smell the, the, you know, the foot. Of it. Yeah. Sweet smoke. <laughs> Sweet Basically, like as like, opposed it, to it, sweet nuts. No, I mean, I mean, no, seriously, it's 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 got a nice, a little bit of smoky aroma, but it's but it's a very is a that sweet undertone. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I'm getting with this. Mm. Sweet smoky type of. It's a I, very I don't, yes. I don't, I don't want to call it flavor. It's just a a, a sweet. I'll, I'll term Dave's. I'll say a sweet smoky bouquet. Yep. Yep, very sweet, very rich, mm -hmm. mm. and uh, just a little bit of pepper. Yeah, a little sprinkle. A little sprinkle of pepper yeah. in the bouquet there. That would that would be it's my description nice. as well. Very nice. That would be yours. Dave, yep. what would yours be? I get I you like know, it. a creamy, yes, creamy, creamy, <laughs> a creamy bouquet, and I also get a little bit of peanuts. Peanuts? Really? Peanuts. Mm -hmm. Now, specifically... What kind of peanuts? Planters. Planters. Okay. Shelled or unshelled? Unshelled. Salted. Salted. Roasted. Yeah. Roasted. No, Roasted. you're just making that up. That's true. That's what he loves to eat. Mm. It has nothing to do with the fact that you brought in a quart of sweet nuts. Planters. Roasted. Yeah. Honey roasted. Unshelled. 
salted peanuts. Yes. You know, you know, know the taste. You know the taste of the milk that's left in the Fruit Loop bowl after you've eaten all the yeah. Fruit Loop. <laughs> you have the milk that's left there. That's the that's best. the that is the smell of the aroma. How about that like I Reese, get. Reese's Puffs? The milk at oh, the end of Reese's yeah, yeah, Puffs, right? man. Oh, that is the best. Oh, dude. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> better than Pebbles. That's better than oh. the cereal itself. Do you, do you put chocolate milk in your cocoa? Bowl? No, I, I don't. But what? Cocoa. You got chocolate milk right after it's you eat the like cereal. Over oh, my some God. Chocolate. Dude, yeah. you got, you're, are you diabetic? But let's, you, your let's, brother might be let's diabetic. Let's agree I'm on trying. something. I haven't achieved that level yet. <laughs> your cigar <laughs> does not taste like... No. The milk that's left over from your cocoa puffs. No, it does taste. Okay. No, it, does it doesn't. Like you may like the milk that's left over from no. having your cocoa puffs, but that Although is not what tobacco it's... tastes like ever, hmm. ever. The okay. da- in Dave's world, it does. In no, Dave's no, world, no, there's no, you know no. pink, you know flying unicorns that go around <laughs> everywhere. Okay, now um, uh, I have a cigar confession for this week. Here we go. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, and the cigar confession for this week is a question that I have been asked by uh, several people, and and that is, why is my cigar always canoeing? And the key word there is always. User error? Well, if they're yeah. always canoeing. If it is happening, if now cigars can canoe because they are improperly rolled, and that can happen. It's a handmade product. If the tobacco is not uh, bunched correctly in the filler, if the binder Bunchy. is not on right, you can the, the cigar will burn more on one side than it does on the other. That's what canoeing is. Okay. If it happens frequently and on different cigars, <laughs> the problem is you, my friend. Mm-hmm. It's Truth how it it's, you know it. it's how you are lighting it, and here are the the two things that that I see happen. And when you use a torch to light your cigar, this is really easy to do. One of the things people do is they try and light their cigar too fast. They really want to rush to get it going because they're so excited to get that sweet cigar into their mouth and so they take the they take the the lighter and they blow it right up to the end of the cigar like this and you've got flames going on you know it's it's like a rocket taking off everywhere and there's flames shooting everywhere they're shooting up the side of the cigar and yes you get it lit real quick but it's probably not the heat along the foot is probably not all that even and therefore it is going to start to canoe the other thing that can cause canoeing is if you unevenly light the cigar Mm -hmm. especially if you're not looking at it if you're just holding it up and going like this and you don't see what you're doing you may be getting one side of the cigar hotter than another Mm -hmm. and you if you leave if the if the wrapper is not um burning evenly as you start uh the cigar it's probably going to canoe now, if the cigar is rolled correctly and you notice that, it can be fixed. You can touch up the cigar like you see some of us doing. You can take take your um, torch and just uh, touch it up a little bit. Uh, the cigar may That's even correct bit. itself. Yep. But that is one big thing that I see happening a lot, and that is that people are trying to light their... and uh, in, in lighting their cigar, they're doing it too quick, or they are uneven unevenly lighting the cigar do you guys notice anything else yeah don't lick your cigar people do that i don't know why but don't well we've covered that in the previous episodes. well what does that have to do with it's like a little canoeing? uneven the, a little I mean, totally it's going, it's fine. i could totally uneven the burn are you adding a random amount of moisture all over it come on that's true that's yeah, true that's yep. true yep he's, he's got some he's got some points there it's one of those facts of physics people that wet things don't burn <laughs> <laughs> so uh don't slobber all over your cigar before you stick it in your mouth and uh certainly not the foot of the cigar that you are trying to light yeah paul Very do you have anything to add to that uh if you unevenly light the cigar and you're a power dragger mm-hmm. power <laughs> smoker well i call it power dragger the first yeah. few puffs uh the dra- first few drawers in and they're like this they're really going at it really hard for the first couple times and that that light the 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 foot like you say the lit part of the foot 
uh, just takes over that side of the cigar is going to canoe. There's no question. You can also, when you're lighting the cigar as well, what I found out by trial and error, um, turn the cigar. If you're going to light the cigar in your mouth, where I'd say 90% or 80% would do, Mm -hmm. turn the cigar when you're lighting it, rotate it. it. Yep. So you can manage. So you can manage burning the entire foot. Um, yeah. That's what that's what I've done in the past, and that's what I still do. You need and to it, you need to get the the wrapper bonded fully, yep. bonded to the um, binder. The binder. Yep. And that's what happens when you burn it. And um, if you don't get that done right, like Nick says, mm-hmm. yep, it's not going to work. That's, that's why that's why toasting or teeing it up. Yes. I do that all the time. Toast mm-hmm. it. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Toasted. Really? You toast it all the time? I toast my cigars all the time. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Toasty. Toasty. Toast. Let's have a toast. toast. Um, what do we think of the pairing? Ooh, wow. He well, talks so I, much I th- about I the think cigar. It's a, I think it's a complimentary pairing, and I think mm. it's bringing out a lot more of the sweetness of the cigar. I agree. Mm. I concur. Hit I, it. I think... I concur. Okay. That took a little too long. Yeah, it did. we got to yeah, work sorry. on your reflexes, yeah, Dave. Okay, we're gonna have to do some gym. Mm-hmm. Clean you know. my screen. Or we'll do some ball exercises. I don't think it has this. anything to do. No, with I tapped your it screen. twice and it went off once. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, stop! <laughs> we'll do some ball exercises after this. Uh, okay. You'll get better. Play get his, yeah. Get his, you know, those little finger things. We can do yeah, that. The, we do yeah. some, you know, some reaction drills and stuff. And mm-hmm. Make sure he's on point. Um, I do think it's a complimentary pairing. I, this is not a very heavy rye. Not at rye. all. No. And um, I think rye. it's got just enough spice to it that it it jazzes with the with a cigar. You know, I, I think the the cigar actually has less spice than mm-hmm. the rye it does. But because it does have some spice, mm. the sweetness in the cigar kind of plays really well with that. Mm-hmm. Sweet and spicy. Yes. You know that goes really well. I'm enjoying the pairing very much. What are you thinking, Nick? Anything else? No, no, the no, the no, no. Dave, he's getting better. He's getting a little better now. Um, the I would think with a rye, you would definitely get that long finish of that that spice, that bite. But you don't in this one, which is really nice. It really goes well with the cigar. It develops um, the spice note on there on the retro head a little bit more than with nothing or with maybe a single malt. Um, but it goes really, really well with this Jack Rye. It, it's, it's really incredible. The sweet note, bringing out a little bit more of the sweet note in the cigar. Mm-hmm. Really, really, really nice. Uh, very well. All right. Uh, Heather says, incredibly well. that, uh, she says, I love you, Dave, but I think it's more pistachio than peanuts. I'd, I'd have to agree. <laughs> Possibly. I'd have to agree. <laughs> but it's did you read nuts. John's? Yeah. He agrees agree with, with me. Yeah, I agree with Nick. Steak and red wine. It's that bold, earthy, mm-hmm. gamey that I would think would be an excellent mm-hmm. food pairing with this, yeah. food mm-hmm. drink pairing with this. It would be uh, exceptionally well. Now, you know, Heather, a.k.a. Well. AKA Sticks for Chicks said, uh, Sticks for Chicks, <clears throat> that's why I put on my reading glasses to light my cigar. You got to see what you're doing. That's mm-hmm. that's half true. She puts her reading glasses on as mm-hmm. like safety glasses. I've seen her lighter cigars before. Mm. <laughs> is that a good thing protect, or a bad thing she needs to protect her eyes from all that flamage that's going on down there <laughs> good grief all right um what's <laughs> our final what's problem. our final verdict here on the 724 113 toro that's fantastic that's your verdict dave uh it is yes it is it is absolutely astounding astounding i just want to buy dixon's all day okay uh, okay i want to okay i want to drive my plow truck all day just like kurt does that's that's kind of what so I want what to do, do you, what do you think of the cigar oh yes the cigar is fantastic you should buy one if you if you're near one of the shops in texas or in new hampshire come by get the cigar you won't be disappointed uh, uh, right now this is my favorite 724 cigar absolutely yes um i think it's a very very good blend it is so smooth and creamy and I had expected, with it being a Nicaraguan Puro and with it being the Jalapa, which is on that Factory 57, which has a lot more spice to it. Mm, that does, this, yeah. I was expecting this to be a very 
spicy cigar. Mm -hmm. It's not at all a no. spicy cigar. No. I think, you know, one of Kurt's, you know, um, goals with cigars that he's involved with is that he wants it to be a cigar that just about anybody can get into. This is definitely uh, one of the case with this. Too. If it were really spicy and peppery, that would throw some people out. And so uh, the creaminess, the smoothness of this cigar, even though it's very rich, mm. um, it's like smoking a dessert. Yeah. You know, it's a great, great, this would be a great after dinner cigar. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and um, I think it's just a great job. Joe and, and uh, uh, Kurt both did a great job in putting this together. What What's your final thoughts, Paul? Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with you, Dan. This is my favorite 724 cigar so far. Um, it's the, the perfect combination to me for the earthy leather, spice and sweet. Um, really smooth, creamy smooth. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think the the pairing with the uh, Jack Daniels uh, rye whiskey, again, bringing out a lot more of that sweetness of the cigar. It's just it's just continuing on. Uh, hats off to you, Kurt. This has been a phenomenal, phenomenal cigar. All right. Well, that's our final thoughts on the cigar. We're going to show you a little video right now while we get ready to switch hats and smoke some pipe tobacco. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.
right, everybody, we are back and we are going to continue our tasting notes show smoking this Peterson's my mixture 965. Now, of course, that used to be a Dunhill um, brand. And um, in 2018, when Dunhill stopped making uh, pipe tobacco, um, Scandinavian Tobacco Group, which had been making it for them for a good long while, um, picked up the rights to the recipe and put it under the Peterson brand, which they already owned. So it's the same thing that had been made before under Dunhill for at least the last um, 10, 15 years, however long they've been producing it for. It's been a, it's been a good long while, not just a recent changeover. And um, it is one of the most popular pipe tobaccos that are out there. And it says on the back of the tin, balanced smoking tobacco with a cool flavor. Brown Cavendish accompanied by light oriental tobaccos and small Latakia leaves. English mixture. Um, there is a Cavendish, a, a Virginia Cavendish, Latakia orientals, and Virginia in this. There's no flavoring in it it is a ribbon cut tobacco and paul we're drinking something else with the pipe tobacco here what are we uh drinking here we're going back to one of my all well not all-time favorites but one of my earlier all-time favorites uh i i used to be a big grand manier fan Mm. many years ago i was drinking this with back in the early days when i was smoking cigars probably the late 90s through the early 2000s and uh this was my drink of choice uh, this is before I ever really got into the <laughs> the pairing world, so to speak. But uh, yeah, so tonight we're we're drinking the original Grand Marnier, uh, which is a cognac based orange flavored liqueur. Mm. And we each have a little cube in there. I think we have a little cut bit down of cu- on the sweetness a little bit. Yeah, they they recommend, and I, that's how I used to drink it. Uh, mm-hmm. Just a couple of ice cubes and uh, just uh, just a wonderful, nice, sweet orange. Are you going to forgive Paul for putting ice cube in your drink, Nick? Yeah. I got to. I love the guy. I, f- I feel that we all need to be on the same wavelength, so to speak, tonight. No cognitive dissonance. Cognitive? Cognitive <laughs> dissonance. Bom, bom. You record that, Dave? I hope so. <laughs> cognitive. cognitive dissonance? Oh, that's good. <laughs> wow. Um, let me tell you a little bit about this blend here. Um, my Mixture 965 was originally <laughs> blended by Alfred Dunhill, the guy who started Dunhill. And was a longtime favorite of Dunhill line of tobaccos uh, since its introduction in in around 1912. This tobacco has been around for a long time, more than a century. Now, um, if you're like me, you kind of ask yourself the question, why would you name something My Mixture 965? It's kind of like Lane's, you know, 1Q. What does that mean? Nobody at Lane Limited or a Scandinavian Tobacco Group even knows what it means. Um, and hence, I think you see a lot of people renaming it. We call 1Q Granite State, Granite State because it just sells better under a different name. But this, my mixture 965, what does it mean? Well, when um, <clears throat> the Dunhill um, Duke Street uh, shop opened in London in 1907, it was a bespoke tobacco shop, and what does bespoke mean? It means that bespoken. It means that things are made and tailored for you. It wasn't a shop where you went in and said, "Ooh, look, a tin of this. I'll take a tin of that." It was a place where you went, and you would come to the shop and have individual custom-fitted blends made for you. That's what bespoke means, which were then recorded, noted, and numbered in his My Mixture book. And at the end, by the close of the 20th century, there were some 36,700 mixtures wow. in that book. This is 965. That's a very low number yeah, out is. of 36,700. So what was. you're saying is, is that the person would go in and describe the bouquet they wanted. The bouquet they wanted, the tastes they wanted, yeah, right? The oh. kind of tobaccos that maybe they wanted in Very there, nice. and something would be tailor-made for that person, and they, you would go in and you'd say, I'd like number, you know, 408, please. You know, that's that's how it was That's how it was done. That's pretty cool. Um, should bring that back. Now, when he, when 
you know, as he started to expand the business, he realized that doing this bespoke thing um, kind of needed to change a little bit. He needed to have some tobaccos that were ready to go. He needed some tints. He needed some ready-made mixtures that people could buy in bulk instead of having every single customer who came into the shop get a brand new thing. And so he started uh, taking some things from his My Mixture list uh, that he wanted to make more widely available. And 965 was one of those blends. Um, now, tobacco's review, TobaccoReviews.com says that My Mixture 965 is a pipe, is a pipe tobacco Hall of Fame inductee. Mm. Nice. I was very be. curious as to what that means because I have not, for the life of me, been able to find any pipe tobacco Hall of Fame anywhere. And the best thing that I that I have found is that in some older version of the Tobacco Review site, they actually had a Hall of Fame section of the website. And this was one of those uh, listed on that site. Should started not just blowing smoke Hall of Fame. Now, that said, anything that has been available on the market for more than 100 years mm. is... A pretty freaking awesome tobacco mm, by yeah. all accounts. People really, really like it. Um, now, one of the th as we kind of continue our discussion here on tasting and pipe tobacco, one of the things that um, we noticed as we started out the show, you know, when we started out back in August of of uh, um, was it twenty? Yeah, twenty nineteen. Nineteen. You know, yep. um, I was really the only avid pipe smoker. Everybody else was kind of just coming on board with that but one of the things that was really interesting was that you know and i th you guys can attest to this right that it, it you started finding it a whole lot easier to pick out what tobaccos were in blends you know yes. with pipe tobacco than it was with cigars i mean and, and th this is still true for me i can't smoke a cigar and say "Ooh, that's from esteli and you know, uh, that's definitely a jalapa wrapper. That's definitely this in the binder. And, and I, I'm I'm not that proficient at this. But with pipe tobacco, it's a whole lot easier to say, okay, I, I'm tasting some Virginias in this. Yeah. I'm tasting some Burleys in this. The taste are more pronounced. You know, so one of the things that I thought I would do is talk about the different types of tobacco that are out there and their basic flavor profiles mm -hmm. and then specifically highlight the ones that are in this blend and see what you guys taste as far as individual things and then combined what are the flavors you're getting overall does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah okay so one of the tobaccos that's in this english blend and um is a very very common uh, type of tobacco <clears throat> is called Cavendish. Mm. And Cavendish is not a type of tobacco in and of itself. T Cavendish is a process that uh, certain tobaccos are undergone, basically where they are steamed and and uh, pressed, and that brings out the natural sugars that are in the leaf. And part of that process um takes away some of the tobacco flavors too. It kind of gets steamed out, basically. And um, if you're smoking a tobacco that has been flavored with something, say vanilla or cherry or coffee or donuts or whatever you want to do, that flavoring is added to the steam and stuff that is used to make the Cavendish. And as the... Um, and the leaf will absorb that flavor as it's going through that process. But in this particular case, an unsweetened Cavendish, a Cavendish that has doesn't have any kind of added flavor to it, is going to have a very mild taste, and it's going to be kind of creamy and kind of have a nice underlying sweetness to it, maybe even like a brown sugar kind of like a sweetness. Okay. Um, are you picking any of that up in me, this Me and Paul beer? smoked it earlier, and uh, one of the things I said was it was like a light brown sugar, yep. kind of a sweetness to it. Yes. And mm -hmm. it is still holding true for me. Do you uh, concur, Nick? I do concur, Danny. Mm -hmm. 
And Paul, you, you I concur? I, I double concur. Yes. You double concur. I do. Yes. Okay. That, that's the first. That's the first notes that I, I picked up when I had the first few draws was this the the sweet. Uh, and again, we was looking up a little bit more on the the brown. It, it said it has brown Cavendish. Mm -hmm. Um, and then because the, the tin doesn't necessarily say it has Virginias in there, right? But Cavendish can be either Virginia or Burley. Correct. So I was assuming based on the brown Cavendish that it had Virginia. Uh, that's what that's the Virginia tobacco mm -hmm. that they used to make that. Yes. So the, to me, not knowing there was any Virginia in this. I would assume that the brown Cavendish was where I was getting the sweetness from. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Am, am I correct with that? Yep. Yep. Mm. Okay. Bravo. Bravo. Now, <clears throat> Virginias are another popular tobacco that's in just about everything. Mm -hmm. And oh, um, fl common flavor profiles you get from Virginias are hay or grass, bread, fruit, and citrus depending on the the kind of virginia it is and what kind of processor or um aging process and maturing maturing what's the word i'm looking for aging aging process it's gone through um and then there are burleys burley is also a very popular tobacco from which cavendish is made and mm -hmm. one of the reasons that people use burley to create cavendish is that burley has a very low sugar content and so as you steam it and you press it um, <clears throat> it's going to readily absorb flavors that are added to it because there's very little sugar content mm -hmm. in it um, and but burley by itself um, has a lot of nutty notes to it there's some wood notes cocoa earth it's those kind of flavors that uh, go with burleys. Would one Q be a burley? One uh, Q, one Q is a Cavendish. Okay, and it's got some, it's got some uh, uh, vanilla topping on the Cavendish, and I believe that it is a, um, a burley Cavendish, but I I can't say that one hundred percent for certain. Um, another tobacco. Uh, type that's out there that is in this blend are orientals mm -hmm. and orientals are <clears throat> um, uh, they often bring kind of floral notes mm. or sweet and sour kind of things or an herbal kind of taste mm. uh, some spice not a pepper spice but like a almost like a savory kind of a spice and, and I get I get a lot of that when yeah. whenever we have a tobacco that has Orientals, I notice that oh, more on the retro hill. Right, mm -hmm. yes. retro hill. Yes, unbelievably amazing in West. And then uh, there's Latakia, which is a, uh, a kind of like Cavendish is um, a tobacco that has undergone a particular process. Um, it's you know basically an oriental type of tobacco that's similar to to burley that is um smoke cured over aromatic woods for a period of six months and over that period of time the smoke um catches on to the uh, uh tobacco and imparts a lot of its flavorings to the tobacco and so it's used more as a condiment than anything else i do know people who smoke this stuff straight <laughs> yep. Um, but that's a dangerous thing to do. Yes. Um, Latakia is a very, very potent tobacco, and it is, uh, go figure, smoky. Oh. Uh, it's got another word that you could use to describe it as a mesquite, mm -hmm. a mesquite kind of wood flavor. Uh, there's a mustiness Stinky. to it. Uh, leather notes mm. to the uh, Latakia. And then the last kind of pipe tobacco that I'll talk about is another tobacco that's undergone a process. It's called Perique. Mm. Oh, and yeah. uh, Perique uh, takes a particular kind of tobacco, and again, it's a process done to it, that it is put into um, barrels that are put under enormous amounts of pressure. And when I say enormous, I mean many, many tons of pressure um, over a period of nine months. And at several points in that process, the leaves are, baby. are taken out and turned over and, and rotated, and then they're pressed again. And um, 
uh, the result is this uh, really, really dark uh, tobacco that has kind of notes of figs or raisins or black pepper. It's, it's kind of like the pepper of uh, pipe tobacco. And again, it's a very condiment-based thing. It's used in very little bits because it's very, very strong in and of itself. Now, in the tobacco we're smoking, we've got a Virginia Cavendish. We've got Orientals. We've got uh, Latakia. What are some of the flavors that you guys are picking up from from this mix together? In my face, Cavendish. Absolutely. You definitely get the Cavendish. In, in your face, Cavendish is what you're picking in up, Dave? Face, Cavendish. Really? That's a really it's that's the right flavor there. you're picking up. <laughs> I didn't know that was a flavor. <laughs> it's Dave's flavor. Taking like, on a flavor town. That like okay, brown so sugar. we'll 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 go to Nick. Sugar. What flavors are you picking up? I've given you lots of time to think about this, Nick. I know. <laughs> Every time I go and think about it, I always take a sip of the Grand Marnier. Yep, and that messes you up. And man. it does. It confuses my palate because the the stop finish, drinking, Nick. Stop drinking. I can't stop. <laughs> um, the Grand Marnier has a very long, sweet finish. Even mm-hmm. though Paul put in a few ice cubes to kind of water it down a little yep. bit or to cut it, didn't help. Um, Chill it. it. It's very good. It's very good. Brings back a lot of uh, a lot of memories. You're not helping the people who are trying to learn how to taste out here. I know. It's good. I want to drink. <laughs> well, some personal stuff about me there. Mm-hmm. Um, some Orientals, some Cavendish in there. Flavor either. Oh, damn it. Um, why don't I save the day? Yeah. Why don't you save the day? Okay. okay. I'll it's, save the day. Go ahead. Guys. So it's tough. It's very tough on this one. So. The 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 notes that I'm picking up uh, uh, right from the fierce fruit draws is going to be a lot of sweet mm-hmm. uh, wood notes, the uh, the floral is, uh, incense from mm-hmm. the Orientals, mm-hmm. uh, some bread notes as well. Mm-hmm. Very very well balanced, but the the sweet notes to me are the most pronounced notes. Yep. And again, when I was talking about the brown Cavendish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Again, not knowing there was any Virginias in this, mm-hmm. I immediately said, well, the brown Cavendish is, is made from Virginias, which I would assume that's what it was. That's yeah. where I was getting the sweetness from. Right. But if there is brown Cavendish and Virginias, clearly the sweetness is the most pronounced notes I'm getting. Yeah. Now, TobaccoReviews.com says there's Virginia in it as well. Yeah. The tin just says brown the Cavendish. brown Cavendish, right. which in my research – you know, is a Cavendish that's made from Virginia. So yeah. maybe, you know, which you want to believe, I don't know. Yeah. I'm um, gonna I'm gonna say you're right. There's probably brown Cavendish in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore the sweet the, but the sweet mm-hmm. notes is the uh the dominant fl- uh flavors that I'm getting from this. Yeah. Incredibly sweet. Yes. Creamy, smooth. Mm. Um there's some light Fruit notes, bread notes, uh, in the cigar. There's a little it's, bit of spice uh, on there. I, there's a yeah. There's some spice. Nice spice in there. The the Latake is really kind of more background. Way kind background. Of a thing. Yeah, yes. you've got that smoky, musty, mm, you I know, like it's part of the flavor that kind well. of Im- imparts itself to everything else. But um, you know, the the bouquet of <laughs> the pipe hey, hey. here. It has a really good floral note to it, and yep. it, it's very herbal. A little bit of nice spice to it. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's, it's an all day kind of English. Pie. Oh, I, I was, yeah. I was actually it, funny you should say that, Dan, because mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself when Dave and I were having a bowl mm-hmm. uh, earlier today. I said yeah. this could easily be an all day smoke, mm. and I and I know it says it has some flakes of Latakia, <sighs> mm-hmm. but. I don't pick up really any of that. To me, mm. I feel like it's no. it's like on the bottom of the retro of retro ale. You know, you get that you know, little bit of smoke riding right below that bouquet of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you are not describing any tastes at, at, at all. <laughs> Thought I was. Is it bouquet? You just is not you just you just throwing out the words, floral. Dave. It, a floral bouquet. There you go. Okay. okay floral bouquet. Floral. floral yes, bouquet. you can say floral. floral. Mm-hmm. The floral notes are on top of like a mesquite barbecue, but it's it's very. 
I don't get a lot of barbecue on no, this. It's not, it's not black Irish eggs. I get some of that smoky <laughs> mesquite in the retro hill. That's what I just said. That's what I just said. I said that. No, you said, I taste this and that. <laughs> I taste Mountain Dew. No, yeah. mesquite with floral notes. I think with the I drink, for me, with the drink, it's kind of... The floral is prominent. It's the, because the drink is so sweet, my palate can't discern the sweetness in the tobacco from the drink. So all it's kind of picking up is that. Okay. We're gonna, so stop drinking. Well, well, no, we're no, gonna, no, we're no. Gonna, we're going to make. We're going we're gonna, we're to no. give you a couple of minutes without the drink to you see if you can pick up here. the true flavors of the tobacco. Yeah. Let me cleanse the palate. Yeah. My goodness. Good yeah. I don't. I don't. You know, get any kind of uh, barbecueiness. No. It's, it's, it's it's in the retro a, hail. It's more of a smoked. Retro hail is picking up a lot of the Orientals, the the, yes. the floral, the undertone. incense with a, just a tad tad bit of spice, but it is, Which is super that's, smooth. That's mesquite. No, it's, it's, no, to me, not really. To me, it's like a, a little bit of mesquite, but the major part of the retro hail. I think is you, floral. I think you want it to be mesquite, but it's yeah. not. No, I the, the, I, I, I would have to probably go with uh, with Dave on this one. The, ah. the mesquite in the retro hail, for me, the retro hail is just really pronounced. Um, it, the there is some, you know, now that I, I cleanse my palate a little bit with the water, it, the sweetness is kind of tiptoeing along in on my palate, but that mesquite and smokiness on the retro hail with a little bit of spice is super pronounced. I, I, I know you guys think that maybe I'm making it up and I'm trying to, you know, stay on Dave's side here, but it is. It, for Thank me, you. it is. It, you know what I mean? Dave could be, you know, not just blowing smoke over here, oh, but... Oh. Um, I think you're both just blowing smoke. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. I will continue to blow smoke through my nose and enjoy this wonderful like, retro ale. But it is good, though. Mm -hmm. Nick, Aww. that's all you're going to be doing is blowing smoke because we're not letting you drink for the rest of the night. I should, <laughs> we, we, uh, I should call uh, the police and have you guys arrested yeah, for that. There's yeah. a backy police. That's, okay. that's uh, domestic violence, if, if you ask me. Mm. Mm. They're busy doing other things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's another show. That, yes, that's a whole other show. Yes, it is. Um, uh, but this might be a, a good segue to another new segment that we're mm. going to be doing, and that is, is Paul just blowing smoke? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so I have a statement <laughs> that I'm going to say, and I want you guys to... Statement. I want you guys to think about it and see if I'm blowing smoke. So it's true or false kind of a thing, right? Yes. Mm. Okay, here we go. Uh, you know I'm. Paul you, you know I'm. A, hear this you, chat, you know I'm a right? dog lover. Now, in my adult life, I've had four dogs mm. in my life. Okay. Um, in the last twenty years or so, mm -hmm. and they all love to go on walks or have loved to go on walks. Yeah, dog walk. Having said that, in all my years of walking my dogs, I I have never not smoked a cigar. On That's my walks, a my negative. dogs. Okay, I. You, I you have always, always smoked. Okay, I have. I, thank you. I will return it for Dave, who can understand this. I, <laughs> I have always smoked a cigar <laughs> on all my dogs' walks. That's false. False. True. Mm -hmm. True. <laughs> That's it. That's all you're gonna say. Know, you're not gonna. You're not gonna like try to. I think you snuck a pipe in there once. No, Dave, I've never smoked a pipe on my walks, ever. Oh. So I'll rephrase it again. I have always smoked a cigar on every single walk with all my dogs. That, I would have to say that's false. False. True. It is absolutely true. Damn. Yes! I thought there may be one. Correct. I thought there may be one correct. in there that you would have been like, oh, I don't have a cigar. I'm just still, nope. still going to walk the nope. dogs. And it doesn't matter if it's raining out. Or snowing Rain. out, or 90 plus degrees out, it doesn't make a difference. If I'm going out for a walk with my dog, he's smoking. Well, baby. I have a one dog now, but I had three golden retrievers in my, you know, earlier adult life. Without fail, if I'm going to go out on a normal walk with them, yeah, I would always have a cigar. Excellent. How do you keep a cigar going in the rain? 
Hmm. I can understand well, that's, how you that's keep what, it going. Well, that's, that's why they invented umbrellas. Oh, okay. So you yeah, okay. okay. All right. That, that, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to go out there answer. in a pouring it's rain and, 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 and and you know they don't mind getting wet, but I mean I yeah, certainly. But how do you pick up the dogs? You know, little poopy doos. If you're holding the umbrella and the cigar, it, it's I mean, not, it's, it's, it's not, that, it's not that difficult. Got, you, if you, you just take your time, you've got you'd... the leash, you've got the umbrella. There's both hands right there. That's okay. You could put the cigar in your mouth. You hold it. Yeah, in your mouth. but if you got the leash and you got the umbrella, that sounds like I a did, conspiracy. You, you hold. <laughs> you hold the umbrella and the leashes in one hand. That's dangerous. Well, it depends. If you if they're disciplined, which I know Paul, their dogs their dogs are disciplined. They'll sit. They'll stay. He can do what he's got to do. What the do do? <laughs> they can do the do. You make do with, with what, what you have. You That's make it. do with what you have. He makes it work. Correct. Paul yeah. makes it work. Mm-hmm. Next question. I was actually in, 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 well, I'll make another, I'll make another statement here too. He says, in, in, Cole, go down there and pick that up. No, no. no <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. He's never on these walks. It's always me. Okay. But I was in the development that I was living in for a number of years. Development. I was, was always, developed. I was, yeah. I was always, <laughs> I'll say neighborhood day for you who can understand that. No. <laughs> in the neighborhood that I was living in, in the beginning, yes. they, 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 they didn't really know me that well. But mm-hmm. they would say, that's the guy who's always smoking a cigar when he's walking his dog. Nice. That's how, it, that's how they knew me. Before they even knew anything about me. That's what I was known as, the guy who's always smoking a cigar, walking his dog. Danny, can I have my drink back, please? No. <laughs> man, I, there's I nothing wanna, that I can I, drink here, man. Yeah, I know. And now I'd like to know what you actually taste. <sighs> so what do you taste? Some sweetness, some spice. <laughs> just going to tell you what he wants. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, what no, kind of it back. sweetness? You're not getting it back? That's not fair at all. Tell me what you taste. I just told you. I get a little bit of sweetness. Tobacco note. Ah. Hit the hit the stinger. A lot of tobacco note. There you go. Like I don't know why. Why? Why it's tobacco, Nick? Um, um, This, this, this. This is sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, man. This is so painful. It's so painful. I'm just trying to get you to actually taste. I am, man. This look. It's 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 come. It's great. It's, it's, it's pipe, great. Nick. It's, I know it's pipe. Um, it's just it's complex. It is complex. There's a lot of sweetness. I'm getting more of that musty, smoky mystique. Mesquite. Mesquite. Mystique. Here. That smoky mystique. Give that. Give that. that smoky mystique. Give that back, please. Thank you. Uh, well, Ladies and gentlemen, dude, Nick has been removed from the panel. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, Jim. All right. And uh, but before Nick goes, uh, we have another news segment for you, yeah. uh, which is going to be kind of a fun thing, and that is the nicotine meme of the week. I make sure I keep the a nicotine name. meme, the nickel meme the of nickel the week. Meme. What do you think I, of that nickel meme? I like it. You like that? I do. Nickel I, meme I like of the week. Much. Nickel meme of the week. Can we can we explain this meme? We could. I I so I was looking at. I got the text the other night, and I had to you know come up with this a meme that's significantly clean for the show for the viewers and make sure that it wasn't too crazy or dirty mm-hmm. so the first meme i came across i i researched like a thousand memes a lot of them were uh, a little off color and mm-hmm. a little over the line really yeah, a little why, bit why you, do i have you, no with you really, really? yeah okay. <laughs> so this is the first one that i saw and i immediately thought of dave uh so from here on out, I'll have a meme for each and every one of us <laughs> for the show. Um, but I saw that when I immediately thought of Dave, and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely Dave. That's like, definitely what he does on his days off right Star there. Wars. So that's a, a perfect mm-hmm. night. It says what a perfect what a perfect day looks like, and it's his bed, hot cocoa, Star Wars, and a fireplace. But the fireplace he doesn't have. So but he'll still, have it. it's it's still like literally like when I go home, I'm so going three to out watch of four. three out of four episode of Clone yeah. Wars and go to bed. Like it, it's That's gonna it. happen. It, yeah. The fireplace will be on his TV. He'll crank the heat like he has a real fireplace, and he'll go to bed. So that meme was for Dave. The mm-hmm. next one will be for Danny, Pastor Padron. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait till you get to me. 
Oh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. Oh, that's gonna be. It's nostalgic. gonna be biblical. Oh, really? Mm. It's gonna be biblical. Okay. Incredibly well. <laughs> no, that's no, Dave. <laughs> you've you've had too much to drink, Dave. Really? Yeah, I concur. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you ready for a little? Would you rather? Yeah, of course we are. Ready for a little something we ready. actually have a stinger for. All right. Mm -hmm. there we go. Well, you, it's not like you didn't have time to make stingers for everything else. Yeah, you know, it's complicated work. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Um, this would you would rather question is for everybody. 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 Including chat. Well, Dave, That's they everybody. can answer it if they'd like. Okay. They can answer Let's it if hear they'd it, like. Chat. Come on, chat. All right. And the question is this. Mm. Would you rather... Always be forgetting your cutter Ooh. or always forgetting your lighter. Oh, damn. Well, that's easy for me to answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would rather always be forgetting my cutter because really? I have a knife on me. Always. Man. So regardless of whether or not. I was going to say, if you were going to say something like, because I know that Dan always has his cutter. Well, there's that too, but I always no, have a knife. No, I no. have my Leatherman on me at all times. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dad. So, God rest his soul. Yep. God rest his soul. Good man right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Nick, would you rather always oh. be losing your cutter or your lighter? Oh, God. It, it'd be my cutter. It would definitely be my cutter. Why? And Dan... Because you can always bite your cigar, even though it's bite. not recommended it's at bite. all. At all. But if you can light the cigar, then they, there's <laughs> happiness. There's, then then there's it. happiness. At least you can light it. At least you can light it. So for me, it would be my cutter because I can always grab something sharp and, you know, cut it or just bite it. Um, you can always buy a chisel. Yeah, a chisel you could it. just pop it, but as far as regular cigars, it would you would have a really hard time with a torpedo, which I have done in the past, which is a total bleep show. Um, Why do I have no trouble believing that you actually did that? I did, man. <laughs> I've got my cutter. I'll just I despise it. Just bite it. Um, but yeah, it would be it would be the cutter. I would I can go my whole life without the cutter. Um, but lighter, I would need a lighter. I would need some sort I of concur. Yes, concur. Paul, you can't smoke a cigar without a lighter. Yep. And I do agree with Nick to a degree that you can bite off your if you need to bite he off the, the, your, the end of your open. cigar <laughs> to get it going. Wow, that is so bad timing. That however, just how, however I will. Ridiculously bad. So I will take it a step further. Go. I would rather forget my, or not be without my cutter, but if you ask someone for a cut, you have no idea where that cutter's been. That's mm -hmm. true. That's why I always I would rather bite it. So I would rather have my lighter. For sure. I would rather stick it in my own mouth than stick it in someone else's cutter that had cigars <laughs> in their mouth. Because we all know Dude, where that we all know that's what gross. we all and have, we all have seen we all have seen <laughs> we all have seen what happens with that community cutter. Where are we at? Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Yep. Um, I can cut I can cut my cigar with my fingernails. Wow. Well, that most Could most caps. Yeah. Most caps you can do that. You can you it, can you can do, you can that. do that. that. I thing. know I know. You know, a number of people, um, Edgar, for instance, never Edgar. uses a cutter. Just really? He wears an Edgar to just, he just goes around with, and so does it with his fingers. So that's why he has a long fingernail. You know, but if you got a even just a little bit of a fingernail, you can just kind of go around there and you can pull off a nice little thing. So you don't need a cutter, but lighters... Yeah, yeah. I Fire. need a lighter. And that's, Thank you, that's, Prometheus. That is important for a whole bunch of other things, too. Um, so I would rather always now in a best of all possible worlds though, either I have, I have both and usually I have several of each. Yeah. Like not necessarily in it. Like I'll keep some in my, I'll keep a, uh, a, a lighter and a cutter in my coat pocket and I'll have a lighter and a cutter in my pants pocket. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that, you know. You know, just in case. Just in case. I have no redundancies. I have learned that redundancy yeah. is major. 
I have two lighters. two lighters for me. Lighters for me. I have for me. I'll, for me. For me. So you can't disagree with anything this, I'm saying because this. For me. This. Well, just like you, Denny. Mm-hmm. I always I keep you, a lot. I love you too. Aww. Um, Bonding moment. Absolutely. Uh, only on not just blowing smoke. Um, I have a lighter and cutter always mm. in my box. I have a lighter and cutter in every room in my house. Mm. I do. I swear to God. I keep them in the bathroom. I do. I have. I have my Dupont. Damn. I have my Dupont cutter and lighter in the bathroom next to the sink. Because that's where the good I stuff have, is. <laughs> it is just in case. I have my my Duponts in the bathroom right next to my beard oil. Uh, and my combs. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. Laurel. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> really? In my, in my bedroom on my bureau. <laughs> beard oil and, and the methane in the bathroom. I mean, that's <laughs> not just blowing it for it. In my bedroom on that's my cool. bureau, on Kaboom. my bureau next to my colognes, I have a lighter and a cutter. Nothing fancy, just a regular single flame jet mm -hmm. and a regular uh, guillotine cutter. Yeah. In my smoking room, I have several cutters and lighters. Mm -hmm. In my car, I have yep. a cutter and lighter in the center console. Yeah, console. Plus a refill of butane, just in case. Mm -hmm. uh, in my truck, I also have truck. a lighter and a cutter and a knife. Knife. Um, okay, that, we get the picture, Nick. You have a lot. Yeah. Picture is painted. All right. Uh, on on uh, my motorcycle, uh, in my back seat, okay. I have a lighter and a cutter right. as well. We, we, we get it. Yes. Okay, yeah, I have cutters redundancy. everywhere. Yes, we, we get it. Thank, Thank you. you. Come just, again. Just make sure. Good. good. Yep. Yep, right. we got it. <laughs> uh, Heather says cigar smokers are very chivalrous. They will lend you a cutter or a lighter. I will never use another man's cutter, uh, but will you use another woman's? Ooh. Except for a handful of you, and you know who you are. Yes. <laughs> I hope it'll be I love me. you, Heather. Yeah, I'm sure she's not t mm. talking about you, Dave. Mm, not at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, that's true. Uh, people are very chivalrous, but uh, people who... Um, are uh, in the business and who know their way around in cigars and have any idea of how people are at all will be very particular about who they lend their cutter to and uh, will be very wary of it. But I'm very happy to lend my cutter to a customer who's left their mm. their cutter in the car or they've left it at home or they, you know, they don't have one there. Mm. And I am not. Because I have seen them you know, bring the cigar to the counter. I mm -hmm. can see that it's still in the cellophane. Mm -hmm. Can I use borrow your cutter? Yes, you may borrow my cutter. Mm -hmm. And typically what I will do is I will take their cigar Correct. and I will cut it for yes. them yes. and hand it back. Yes. yes. I, I usually it so cut it. I, I, may I'll, I cut it for you? Yeah, I'll cut it right after the purchase. Yeah. As soon as they're paying for it, if they're going upstairs to our lounge, they don't have a cutter on them or a lighter, I hand them some <laughs> matches and I'll grab the cigar from them, unwrap it, cut it properly, and a lot of people will be like, oh, well, there's just a little little snip there. That's how, you, you, cut, say, that's yes. how you properly cut the cigar. Mm -hmm. um, but I usually I'll cut it for them. Yeah. Now, you can you – can, you can, uh, uh, this happened once to you. There was a, a customer oh, yes. who came yep. and asked if they could borrow a cutter. Yeah. You gave them a I store. Did. You gave them a store cutter. Yep. It was, you know, it wasn't. I don't know if it, it was, was yours not or my not, cutter, no. But it was, a, you know, a store cutter. Yep. And they promptly took the cigar, licked it, licked it. You know, the, put the the whole head of the cigar in their mouth, and then cut the cigar. And they handed the cutter back, and Nick said, "No, no, no. that's yours." <laughs> and it was, that was yep. priceless. I was not. I was not taking that. <laughs> no, 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 not there's like your cigar. There's version. not enough. There's not, not enough hand sanitizer in the world. Mm. That I despise it. He, he does despise it. I do as well. Uh, there's not enough hand sanitizer in the world, or surface cleaner, or bleach that I would use on that mm -hmm. and reuse that. That is yours for life, my friend. Yep. Enjoy it. You just got a free cutter. Now I know you can you can disinfect and that clean is not cutters, a trick. but but uh, frankly, you know, working with little double guillotine things, mm. I am not really interested in trying to disinfect it. No. That no. you're you're getting you know you're getting dicey territory. You're yeah. getting dicey territory, just you know, as in dicing your fingers. <laughs> I really oh, yeah. do not want to do that. So. You know, Nick did the right thing and just gave the guy the cutter and said, uh, no, that's yours. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
beautiful. And then gave him the Ooh, evil eye. Oh, yeah, Dave. You yeah, you're, really, Dave? Yeah, you're really good. All right. You need to yeah. yeah. stop. Meat. You need to stop. Just yeah. cool it. Take 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 his alcohol neck. Right. He's already Great. done. Take his soundboard. Yeah, it needs yeah, to take, take, a, soundboard. take soundboard. You need to, I'll take the keyboard <laughs> and the mouse too. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't uh, make you look any better, Dave. No, you actually kind of makes you. Yeah, stop hitting yeah. buttons. Don't don't hit any more buttons. Buttons buttons. buttons. Don't don't do any of your little sound effects either from your mouth. <gasps> yeah, like that. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Huh. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize while singing "Happy Birthday" five times. Is is that uh? I'm not sure what that means, that's Heather. That, is that Heather? Does that insane. mean that insane. that's a, that you're supposed to? Is that what sanitize your hands and sing "Happy Birthday" five times? I think that's a lot of sanitizing. Yeah, it's, we it's are weird. going down a rabbit hole where there's no coming back. It yeah. is. Yeah, I, we're I already over. I pull us back. I think we need to stop that. Yeah. Uh, so um. What Where is what is the final verdict now on the Peterson My Mixture nine six five? Mm, delicious. I get a little sweet. I get a little sweet. Come on now. This is about tasting those things. Man, I just it. I'm trying again. I, again. It's good. It's delicious. It's good. It's That's good. not a taste. It's not a flavor. It's look. It's look nice is not a flavor. <laughs> Some nice a lot of subtle nice sweetness. Is not a flavor. No. Subtle sweetness with some smoky, some mystique. Mesquite. Mesquite. I mesquite. keep messing up that word. Yeah. Oh. Municipal. Don't be, thinking, Blue, sorry. Don't be thinking about the X-Men. I this can't is... help it, man. There's a lot of Wolverine stuff going on on the internet saying he's coming back. Think anyways, anyways, away, you? anyways. Wolverine does not look anything like Mystique. No. <laughs> but she well, fought her a lot. Yeah, they, they fought each other. Yeah. yeah. But she um, fought her a lot? Is that what you said? fought her a lot. Thank you. Yeah. They have this. Pronoun, sorry. Going on. Okay. But anyways, um, I, I get a lot of that smoky mesquite. Mesquite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Dave, <laughs> Dave, next. Right, Dave, what's your thoughts, please? Next, I'm save us. I'm going to sit here and just drink this. I guess, this yeah, that's, that's probably good, but uh, Just go ahead and drink. <laughs> to all the viewers out there. Uh, this, this yummy brown <laughs> taste. <laughs> yummy. It's oh, so prevalent, and the retro hail is so floral <laughs> with an undertone of mesquite. And and that's where the yeah. show went off the rails, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so half of Dave's talk had to do with the taste and flavors. Paul, can you rescue us? Yes, please? I will do well, that, sir. So it, it's, it's got a, an absolute pronounced sweetness to it right off the bat. Uh, a lot of nice uh, floral... Uh, incense on the retro hail, a little bit of wood, a little bit of bread, incredibly well balanced, mild to medium, mm-hmm. all day smoke. Uh, this is this uh, this actually surprised me too. I was mm-hmm. I was not expecting these type of flavors from this when I was reading the tin. Right. I thought this was a lot, Crazy. A lot more lighter uh, than I expected, and a lot more sweeter. This is this is fantastic. It should have said like flavor bomb on the. <clears throat> Crazy. Sweet bomb is more sweet like bomb. it. Yeah, this yeah, is really, bomb. really good. Mm, unbelievable. Very sm- sweet. Incredibly smooth. Um, incredibly well. No, Dave. <laughs> incredibly smooth. <laughs> incredibly smooth. <laughs> you are digging yourself a major hole. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll get the incredible sweet. Not up. only <laughs> can you not describe actual tastes and smells but you I can't even did. hit the right buttons on I the soundboard caramel a toffee caramel a toffee that's the thing there is a nice smokiness in the background of this very woody bready uh leathery kind of flavor that's there it is really really good and um you know what what makes me enjoy this just as much as the tastes and flavors and the bouquet <laughs> of, of the uh, tobacco here is the history of it, knowing that oh. this is something that has been around for, years. for you know more than a century mm-hmm. and enjoyed by smokers for you know decade after decade after decade. I love getting into that, and that's something that, frankly, I think cigars don't really have going for them. Yeah, right. You know it, what? Which what, is funny because what they've been around of, forever too. But yeah, but so many of the cigars that we have have been out for. Year to 20, 30, mm-hmm. you know, 40 if, maybe at the if most. You're lucky. But 
this has been around for 100 years and thinking about that and yes it's been made by a couple of different uh, places and it's gone from dunhill to peterson you know the brand is is changed and stuff like that but this basic blend has been around all that time and that says yeah. something and yeah. it's just great to like can you name it's like it, this is literally smoking a can piece you of name history five cigars that you regularly smoke that are over 40 and can you name five pipe tobaccos that have been around for over 40 years that you regularly smoke and i think it would be way easier to name five type five pipe tobacco five type five, five type, type. Oh, okay that flannel yeah. burning yeah. the flannel take his drink away please yeah. <laughs> all right now speaking of My pipe tobacco stands. speaking of pipe tobacco um next week we have a great show planned for you guys we are going to be joined by a very special guest uh max stokeby uh eric stokeby's son and uh, he is the brand ambassador for uh, Peter Stokeby and Lane uh, Pipe Tobaccos for a Scandinavian tobacco group. And mm. we are going to be smoking Peterson's Elizabethan Mixture and Peterson's Three Peas. It's an all-pipe show next week. It is going to be really, good. really good. Max has been on the show before, and he's a great, great guy. Great. He's going to be with us via Skype because of the whole COVID thing. Um, they're allowed to travel one week, and then they have to stay home another week, and this is a week where they have to stay home. So um, he'll be Skyping in with us, but uh, we are very, very excited to have him. So make sure you go out and uh, get some Elizabethan Mixture and Elizabeth. Peterson's Three Ps, which stands for Peterson's Perfect Plug. Mm, and it and is. It is a great, great tobacco. Both of them are. And so you're going to want to be with us right here on YouTube next week at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And that is our show for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We're so glad that we had so many comments and everything tonight, um, especially with just switching over from Facebook to YouTube. I know, right? Yeah. Ernest Collin, Thank you. you know, we had you, everyone. We lots of people on here. And uh, hope you're all back next week and let people know um, about the podcast because – we're not blowing smoke. Yeah. This is a great show. Don't Absolutely. keep it. You want your friends watching and smoking mm -hmm. and drinking. Tune Halloween. in, boys. With us. Tune, Tune in, in, boys. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being with us. Another day, another smoke.